Hi everybody, thanks for joining me at the Executive Gardener channel. So this is episode two on composting, the composting series. And what we're going to talk about in this episode is pretty much what to compost um, and the, a little bit about the composting process, what to do and what not to do. I want to make it as quick as possible. For this episode I'm going to talk mainly about a composting, uh, number one, a composting bin or a composting tumbler. What things you should be putting in that and then I'm going to finish with a similar because they're similar things what you should do with a uh, with worm composting okay and then at the end I'm going to announce a special contest to give away so keep in mind from the first series in this episode we talk about composting and by the way I'd like to say this this video is not for experienced composters so I get I got a lot of comments and I got a lot of people kind of showing off which is cool um, I, know, I know that most people know how to compost, but a lot of people are intimidated by it. So this is a basic series, a 101 series, and if you are an expert on composting, you can turn it off now, okay, unless you want to hear the contest at the end. So again, this is for people that are looking to get into compost, and I hope it helps you. So keep in mind, as it relates to composting, the important ingredients, and by the way, these are cicadas in the back if you're wondering what the buzzing noise is those that live in the south know what those are. So, um, uh, so the important ingredients for composting, and I have my notes here, are uh, air, warmth, water, and then the, the raw ingredients. Okay, and we'll talk about the raw ingredients and what you should, uh, what you should put in there. Okay, so um, basically if you think about con composting, um, you have the N ingredients, which stands for nitrogen, and you have the C ingredients which stand for carbon, okay? And the N ingredients are also known as the green ingredients, and the C ingredients are also known as, uh, excuse me, the N ingredients are known as, uh, again, the, the green ingredients, the C or the brown, and the N are also called the wet, and uh, the C is also called the dry, okay? So I'm going to refer to both of those as I go through this and I'll keep it as kind of one-on-one -on -one as possible. So, uh, like humans, organisms that are responsible for composting, okay, we talked about that in series one. The microorganisms mainly that are responsible for composting are, they, they require both N and C, okay? So, the nitrogen part is required by microorganisms and worms and other things um, to build themselves, okay? In the C, the carbon is required for energy, okay? So both are required for effective composting, okay? The, the way to think about it is as humans, uh, we use P, protein, to build our muscle, and we use carbs for energy, okay? If we had a diet of all carbs, we wouldn't be too healthy. Likewise, all protein. So we need a good balance of both. So the organisms that are responsible for composting need a good balance of N, nitrogen, and C, and carbon, okay? So balance is key. Now, um, too much nitrogen in your composting bin here is going to heat up the compost too much, okay? And when you heat up the compost too much, it's going to kill all the microorganisms, okay? Likewise, if the nitrogen is too low, the compost won't heat up and you won't have composting taking place. So the key is to find a right balance between the nitrogen and the carb, uh, carbon elements in your compost bin. And, the, and you'll see a lot of ratios, 200 to 1, uh, 50 to 1. I wouldn't get so caught up on them. I think based on where you live, uh, the temperatures where you live, and what you're composting with, you have to experiment with each and then find out what the right balance is. But in general, the carbon to nitrogen ratio, perfect is probably 30 to 1 and 10 to 1, carbon to nitrogen, okay? And that's really to keep your, your bin from getting, uh, or your, your, your tumbler from getting too wet, okay? So ideal ratio, carbon to nitrogen is 30 to 1, somewhere between 30 to 1 to 10 to 1, okay? And I think you'll get good compost out of that. So remember, green is wet, brown is dry. So let's talk about what are some of the things that you can compost with uh, in your tumbler or your bin that would either be brown or green, okay? So some brown paper, uh, excuse me, some things that you can use for brown which are really good are paper, cardboard, stray, excuse me, straw or hay, 
uh, dried leaves or sawdust. All of those are excellent carbon elements that will keep the appropriate amount of dryness in your bin, okay? Any of those. And there's other things as well, uh, but those are the main things, main elements you're going to use, okay? Dried leaves, sawdust, straw, cardboard, and paper, okay? And when you, when you add the stuff to the bin, make sure you cut it up. So if you're using uh, cardboard uh, paper towel holders, cut them up. The smaller the pieces of carbon, the faster they're going to compost, okay? For greens, the nitrogen source, the most popular ones are going to be fruit scraps, veggie scraps, cuttings uh, from um, uh, your tomato plants or uh, pepper plants. Be, be sure, I wouldn't put disease cuttings, but healthy cuttings in there. Grass, certainly. Weeds or chicken or rabbit manure. Both of those would be fine as green or nitrogen elements in your tumbler. And then there's, there's some things that are in between the N and the K. They're called the between compost elements. And those would be things like coffee grounds, eggshells, we'll talk about a little bit later, and um, old compost. So if you have a, uh, an old straw basket, you can compost those or tea bags. Those would also be a kind of an in-between composter, okay? So the key is to get the right uh, mixture in there of N and C and try to figure out how it works. So when you're composting, um, you know, I, I think that it should never be too wet and also it should never be too dry. So it should be a nice, almost like a clay, uh, nice moisture that you can kind of mold it, but not so wet that, that you can squeeze water out of it, if that makes sense, okay? So some key hints to think about <clears throat> is that, so if you've used too many greens, the way you can tell you've used too many greens or too much nitrogen or wet elements is if you put it in there and a few days later it smells rot rotten and it gets slimy, that's too many nitrogen elements, okay? Um, if you have too many browns in there, composting isn't taking place and it's just sitting there and you could also have a smelly mixture. Um, also I talked about shred your browns, the paper, the cardboard before you're putting them in because it'll compost much quicker than if you just dump a whole cardboard box. It'll take forever to compost, okay? And then lastly and don't forget this, you need to buy some type of compost starter, okay? That's got some type of microorganisms in it already um, or positive bacteria, because you need, it's kind of like starting a fire. You need, they sell those little fire logs to start a fire. You need something to get in a fire, the wood burning. In a compost bin like this, you need something uh, to get the microorganisms to get going, to get it heated up, to get the microorganisms and other insects starting to eat uh, and digest and decompose um, the uh, the composting materials. So what I typically do is you can either buy it online, just look for a compost starter, or what you can also do is um, um, take old compost from another bin, that'll have the microorganisms you need in it uh, to get the compost started in your bin or your tumbler. So the things that you do not want to put in your compost pile, we talked a lot about what you should put, but what you do not want to put in your compost bin or tumbler is the following. Cat or dog feces? No, no. Coal ash, uh, cooked food scraps, uh, meat, fish, any type of glossy paper, do not put in your compost bin. Diapers, uh, synthetics, so that would include foam, plastics, foil, or glass. Don't put that in your compost bin, and certainly metals, okay? So, and, and you'll read a lot of stuff. Some people put, and this is, to me, utterly disgusting, but they use uh, human urine for composting. I guess it's high in nitrogen. I personally wouldn't do that, but, um, you know, to each their own. Um, but that's another thing that's debatable whether you should use or not, okay? Um, but I choose not to. So th that's, that's kind of the secret of, for bins or tumblers, what you'll do. Again... I apologize if I'm taking this slow, but I'm trying to be as 101 as possible. And again, you need to figure out what the right mixture of nitrogen and the carbon sources are, okay? I've given you each. Uh, but the key is, again, to be slightly moist, not damp, uh, just damp, I guess is the term, 
when your material, um, not smelly, and you have to you have to sample. If it gets too smelly and too slimy, add more paper and cardboard. If it gets too wet, add, add more paper and cardboard. Um, if it's too dry, add more fruit scraps and vegetable scraps and so forth. So you, you'll figure it out for yourself. Now the reason why I like tumblers, keep in mind you need uh, moisture, uh, you need warmth, uh, you need water, and you need ingredients to activate compost. Now it doesn't go, it, it goes without saying that um, if you live in a hotter area, okay, it's, your composting is going to be done much quicker than if you live in a cooler area. Likewise, in the winter, composting is not uh, as quick as it is in the summer. So warmth and heat is an important element, but at the same time, you don't want it too hot. So experiment it out, see what works for you. And um, your know, composting generally takes anywhere between four weeks and 12 weeks in a tumbler, okay, um, that you turn every few days, okay. In a bin, it takes a little bit longer, uh, maybe three or four months, six months. But um, uh, if you do it effectively, you get those four ingredients, warmth, air, water, and the right mixture of ingredients, it can happen as quick, quickly as four to, si uh, four to six weeks, okay? So I hope that's helpful. What I'm gonna do next is give you a close-up of inside the tumbler, and then I'm gonna switch real quick and show you the worm composting bin and talk a little bit about that. Okay, here we are at my tumbler, as I talked about this before. Okay, what I do is I spin this every two or three days. It's, uh, I think I bought it for a hundred bucks. Um, you can also do it for a bin, but I realize it's a little bit dark, so I do apologize. But anyway, you'll see in there, you see a vegetable, you've got some eggshells, you've got fruit. Um, I do have hay, straw, and then a chopped up cardboard in there. But where I'm standing right here, I can tell I'm doing a good job, okay? And the reason I'm doing a good job is that you know, there's rotting stuff in here and I do not smell anything, okay? So I think I have the good mixture and what I do here, and this is a nice model, I don't remember the name of the model, but, um, uh, and there's two sides, you see this? So uh, when uh, this side is composting and almost done, I can start over here. But the feeling in here, it's a, it feels to be about 110 degrees, which I think is pretty good, maybe 115 for composting. But what I simply do is every few days, uh, I fill it, you know, every day I fill it up, we put stuff in here, I just simply spin it, okay? And by spinning it, it mixes it up really good and gets the carbon with the nitrogen, gets the air in there, and evens out uh, the moisture. So, I really like this thing. It works well, it's on a nice sturdy base, and uh, I'd recommend uh, you guys uh, check it out and get it if you get a chance, okay? I won't show you my bin, but the bin is the same concept. You need similar um, things to put in there, okay? But let's switch over to the to the uh, worms, okay? And I'm not going to go over everything, but in general, uh, I'll tell you about the worms. Uh, so these are two worm ends, I-N-N, you can look online, the worm ends. And one is, I think this is the red wigglers, and this is the African night crawlers. So, important thing to remember about worm compost, uh, composting, and some people use uh, Tupperware tubs, Rubbermaid tubs. I don't, because uh, I think I find they get too moist. So I use these worm ends, which are just canvas bags. But in general, so what the concept here is obviously, uh, I put um, newspaper and fruit scraps, vegetable scraps, uh, eggshells crushed up. Um, that's basically it in here. Uh, really nutritious elements, um, and the worms eat it. And at the bottom. Um, is a drawstring and all the castings are at the bottom okay and they come out so it's a real easy thing to to use and i think i had you have to build the stand yourself but um it's pretty easy to do but the the sack itself which it sits in i think is 80 to 100 bucks so this is just shredded newspaper up here and um the, the only major difference between this and the compost bin is that you really should not use citrus for worms okay it uh, not not really good for the composting worms, and it's not really good to have a high acidic element in the bin. Okay, so I do not put any citrus, no grapefruit, no oranges, um, none of those. Um, other things are fine, apples, uh, peaches, so forth, but citrus should not go in here. Okay. In addition, one of the other important things for worm bins, and I'll reach in here and kind of show you what this looks like, is you know, so worms eat twice their weight in one day. Okay. And these things are just devouring things right now. So 
I put like a whole apple in here the other day. Uh, it's already gone, I'll show you. Banana peels high in uh, potassium, gone. All of those castings are gonna be going into my, uh, into my plants, which is really good. So let me just show you here if I can. Um, so you'll see, you'll see no apples. Um, um, and at the bottom, once I get to the bottom here, you'll see, you won't see, um, there's, there's a bunch of worms here on the bottom, okay? And uh, th there's thousands probably in here, okay? And the important thing I want to talk about when you do worm composting, again, it's, uh, I don't use cardboard in here, I use just uh, shredded paper, you'll see, they digest that easy. But the important thing about this is a few things if you're going to do worm composting, okay? Number one, uh, you need to use some type of mineral dust or rock dust, okay? So uh, obviously worms do not have teeth. To help them digest the food, you need some type of gritty element in uh, the bin to help them digest food, regardless of what it is. Just like I talked about cutting up cardboard and making it smaller, you should cut up your food scraps if possible. It makes it easier <clears throat> for, uh, uh, for the uh, composting worms to uh, take in and uh, with the grit, like I talk about, it helps their digestive system and gives you the castings at the end, okay? Very important. Um, one of the things I use, which is really good, is this uh, called Purina Earthworm Chow, okay? And uh, I try to put this in uh, maybe a, f a few teaspoons or a tablespoon every day, and they devour this. And this is just a simple powder, okay? It looks like flour, but it's got essential nutrients in here, um, ash, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium, sodium, uh, zinc, all those uh, macro, uh, excuse me, yeah, macro and micronutrients as well and the good thing about that is that what they take in they release so that all goes into your plant so i would i would encourage you in between if you run out of scraps because my uh my worms are going through scraps so quickly um it's kind of crazy that uh, i kind of supplement it with a worm chow and that tablespoon of worm chow will be gone in in a day or so but the other thing i want to talk about real too is if you have these two type of bins uh, uh, worm in, excuse me, you gotta be really careful because uh, just like I talked about in uh, composting in a bin, uh, there's moisture needed. So you need to make sure you water these things like daily. If you live in a hot environment, if the worms dry out, they will die. It's as simple as that. They need moisture. So if you, you know, make sure when you get up every morning you water these things, not drenching wet, but just damp enough. Um, I Every day I water these things, both of these, and uh, it works out really well. Otherwise, you'll have uh, dead worms, as simple as that, and the composting won't go as quick. The other thing I'd say to do, and it's really important, is that if you live in a hot environment, uh, the south during the summer, where it gets 100 degrees and the sun is just scorching, is you see on the ground there are shade cloth. Get some shade cloth to drape over top so your worm bins are not getting hit uh, by uh, the, the, you know, the sun, which can heat it up to 150 degrees. Uh, that, that will also be detrimental to composting and the worms. Uh, lastly, I wanted to say in the winter time, you know, if it gets below, you know, I'd say 40, 45 degrees, 50 degrees, bring your worms inside in your garage. Um, they do best uh, in temperatures, you know, I'd say between, depending on the, the variety, between 60 uh, and 80 degrees. The African night crawlers uh, can go a little bit hotter, okay? So that's what I have, but same, same concept uh, for worm composting here as it is in the bins and tumblers. Um, the difference is that you don't really, well, you have some microorganisms, microorganisms in here, but the main composters in the bins are the worms. The main composters, there's no worms in this bin. It's mostly uh, small bugs and uh, 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 microorganisms that, that break it down in here, okay? Um, so that's the difference between the two. So the last thing I wanted to say is that I'll probably do one or two more videos on this in the series. Again, I'm trying to keep it as one-on-one as possible. Is um, I will announce, um, so I'm going to announce, I'm going to be giving away a pound of red wiggler composting worms um, in a contest to the win winner. So um, all I really need you to do is, I guess, make a comment about your interest in composting at the end of this video and the end or the end of the next video and you'll be entered into the contest okay you also need to give me a thumbs up if you like it of course um but uh and you have to be a subscriber of course as well so you have to be a subscriber uh and give me a comment about or question about uh, worm composting or regular composting and that enters you in the contest and what i'll try to do is answer your questions 
uh, just as soon as possible. I apologize. I get a lot of questions and I try to get back to people as quickly as possible. So that's it. That's episode two in the series of um, composting. I like to call it composting 101. Hope this has been helpful. Uh, we'll see you next time for uh, series three in the composting series. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.